and I will turn it over to Dr. Singh to get us started. Welcome to our Riverside STEM High School Parent Orientation. Uh, once again, thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to welcome our team. We have Mr. Standerfer, our principal, Mr. Mayhew, our program coordinator for both middle and high school, Ms. Isquieta, our school counselor, Mrs. Unrath, our guidance technician. And unfortunately, Mrs. Whitehead, our registrar, cannot join us, but we will be giving you her contact information and all information regarding deadlines for the high school um, application. The agenda for today, we will be going over program highlights. Uh, course offerings, A through G requirements, and guidance and tech center services, the application process and timeline, and then a little bit about high school student life, clubs, ASB, and campus life. I'll hand it over to Mr. Standerfer. Thank you, Dr. Singh. Appreciate that. All right. Um, those who join us this evening, thank you for being here. And those that can't be here, hopefully, you'll be able to watch this. Um, later at a later date, and uh, we'll be posting this recording uh, on our website and also sending it out. Um, so I'm going to touch briefly on the school vision, uh, the mission of the program, uh, a few key items uh, about the school and some of the courses that students take as part of the high school program. Um, the first, uh, just wanted to start off by saying that uh, STEM does exist. This is this is applicable to the entirety of the school five through 12, but some exist to inspire and support students in an innovative learning community. And in the high school program specifically, uh, we are providing an immersive and personalized experience for students to be prepared for a college and or career in the STEM path. Uh, that being said, not all of our students end up going on a STEM path and that is completely fine. But we also believe that students benefit from a STEM focused uh, education regardless if they choose beyond high school. Um, academic rigor and support, these are features of the program that Mr. Mayhew So the academic program at STEM. Uh, what you're seeing here before you is the four-year course plan. This is a tentative four-year plan because um, in public education, sometimes um, things can change. But this is what we uh, traditionally have offered our students um, with some modifications to that. And you'll notice that... Um, there's a few things that are different here if you have a student in the high school program now uh, compared to what uh, what is offered this year. Uh, we are anticipating making some changes for the next year's students. The base program is STEM interdisciplinary courses. All of our students take an engineering path of courses. Um, you'll see that right in the middle of that four-year plan. Um, our plan is to start them off with some type of digital design course next year. Um, but that is tentative at this point. And all students have the opportunity in their senior year to finish off their CTE elective pathway with an engineering design course. So uh, up to three years of an engineering path. And they take four years of math. They take four years of science. Uh, obviously, English and history are very standard there. And you'll also notice that the courses um, vary. Some are AP and some are not. Uh, students do have options to take AP classes or a non-AP version of the course. Um, so we have that feature worked into our schedule as well. The last thing I'll talk about on this slide is that we do offer a scholar's diploma, which is an RUSD feature. Uh, we're the only campus that run that offers this diploma. Um, and the requirements for that are there in those two bullet points, the B average and their A3G courses, and then the completion of a capstone project, which Mr. Mayhew will talk briefly about when he talks about the program as well. Okay, so what I like to do with these presentations typically is give us all a glimpse of, of what your student can expect to be doing four years from now, roughly four years from now, or certainly four years after, after completing the program. And so I'm going to play this little video, and it's a couple of years old, but I think it is um, just as relevant um, 
as it was then. So. I'm worried I'm gonna try all of my makeup on, but I'm excited. I'm excited, I'm nervous. <laughs> it's bittersweet. I'm feeling great. I'm really happy to graduate. But at the same time, it's really sad to leave all these people that I've been with for so long because they're basically family to me. <laughs> definitely feeling nostalgic at this moment, though. Yeah, yeah. we're trying to like, reminisce about all the fun times we've had. I'm kind of anxious, but I'm excited to finally be graduating. I'm excited. I just don't feel like it's happening. It feels sort of surreal because we've been at the school for six years and it's hard to imagine that we're leaving today. <laughs>
Um, we believe here that if we can teach them great knowledge and then provide great experiences and have them re reflect upon that, they can see how their learning affects our world. And that's really what it's about, so that the students don't leave here after eight years or four years for our high school saying, but well, why did I learn everything? We want to make sure that our students know exactly why they're learning it and they can take that with them. Um, on the left, we have our design thinking. We do believe in design thinking process, this idea um, of iteration, um, learning from failure, failing early. The um, We're trying to redefine failure, and too many students think that if they mess up, quote unquote, that they're done and that uh, they really don't have the tenacity to move forward. Here, with our, especially with our engineering program and design thinking, there's multiple opportunities to iterate um, and improve upon and having our kids learn that. We can go to the next slide, Mr. Standifer. Um, our engineering program for high school is very, very robust. Um, if you see some of the pictures that we have here, um, we do focus on material science, um, the type of material that goes into something, its strength, how it can work. And um, with that, you see on the left, that's a build that's happening currently in our classes. And our teacher, Mr. Moorhead, challenged the students to be able to build a tower that has multiple um, constraints to it. Um, and then if you take a look at the very bottom, you'll see that there are these VEX kits, uh, the little erector sets sitting down below. And in that point, they had to make their tower so it could hold weight, but then also it has to shake in multiple directions to be able to um, have uh, control those forces. Um, it's a process, and it's, so it's not just a single build, and the kids start to develop their ideas and build them as they see fit in the open end. And I don't know if you can see, there are quite a variety of solutions that we have right there. Um, we also have them on the right-hand side do digital design. We believe that they need to be able to, students need to be able to um, draw their designs um, uh, digitally on computer and also sketch things out on paper to be able to communicate well with them. Um, from this, they can also build their 3D models um, on the physical 3D printing as well. So that is kind of in a nutshell our engineering program as a standalone, but I'm going to talk next about how it works into uh, maybe some of our other program highlights. So here, for example, in 10th grade, um, in our 10th grade, all of our 10th graders will focus on some type of endangered animal. And in their um, science class, they'll look at the adaptations that the animal has had and how it has um, caused it to either stay on the um, extinction list or move off of it. And then in our engineering class, they'll be building, drawing and building a working model of that adaptation. Now that they have those pieces together, um, we take them and we have them focus on a particular audience. For this particular audience, we have them um, talk to our fifth and sixth grade teachers to learn about our fifth and sixth grade students. And they focus on that audience and develop a, um, some kind of lesson to pass on what they've learned about uh, uh, extinction, um, biomimicry, anything that they've learned inside there. But it, it's a great tie because it ties our middle school and our high schoolers together. So that's one program highlight that we have right there that is kind of interdisciplinary um, from multiple perspectives. We can go to the next slide. Um, another one, this is probably our major um, tie in here is this is our capstone for our seniors. And we start in 11th grade and we start looking at what is personalized for that student. We have all the knowledge, we have all of the um, experiences that they've been able to do, and they get to choose um, what they wanna be able to focus on for their time. And it might be a wide variety of things. Um, over on the left-hand side on the top, we have one of our seniors last year who wanted to be able to build some type of robot. And the purpose for the robot is to allow um, third world countries to be able to do surgery. Surgery um, with robots happens in America all over the place, but these machines are millions and millions of dollars. So the idea of taking basic programming, basic Arduino boards, and seeing if they can cross that threshold so that the actual arm can do what it needs to do, and having our students move towards that. It is this student's complete um, uh, process and uh, complete build. At the bottom, we have um, uh, talking about erosion from our local water sources in there. Um, so what we have right here is after, if your students have been here for middle school, but especially if they start here in high school, to focus that shift from, I'm learning this so that I can learn something, to I'm learning this so I can build. I'm learning this so I can show other people. I'm learning this so I can show others. And that's the impact that we really want to be able to have with our members of a community, with our ESLOs. And so, um, yeah, there's a great time to be able to have them build and I'm going to pass it to back to you, Mr. Stanford. 
Thank you. I'm going to introduce Mrs. Gieta, our school counselor, who's going to talk a little bit about um, her department. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, as the high school counselor, I assist your students throughout high school in many different ways. One is with academic programs. I set up their schedule, not only for the Riverside High School graduation, but to meet college requirements. And in addition to meeting the college requirements, I assist students with the college going process. Um, and in the senior year, I am working with seniors weekly with classroom presentations, classroom workshops, in the application, whether it's in the classroom or one-on-one, -on -one, whatever the preference. And in addition to that, life can be stressful with exams, handling academics, extracurricular. So sometimes things get a little difficult and stressful for students. I provide personal and social um, emotional support for the student. Should it be something that the student might need a little bit more, I do then refer to our SAP counselor, who is a therapist, who works with the student a little more in depth, should that be needed. Now, one of the first things I'll be working with you and your student is in the program planning with their courses for ninth grade. Mr. Sandiford presented a slide about the four-year plan. I will be emailing you the ninth grade course request. Currently, it's in draft form, but basically to give you an idea of what your student will be taking in ninth grade, it will be introduction to literature honors. There will be a math level, whether it be accelerated to, or there is a non-accelerated college prep level. We have chemistry honors for them, we have foreign language. Because we're small, we offer only the one, which is the Spanish. And for native speakers, there are other opportunities we'll, in which I'll speak to in a moment. Um, there will be a new elective course, and that's in the planning stages. Um, and then PE. These are the six classes that they will be in. Um, and you will receive a form. I go into the classroom and give the students a form and do a little presentation in the classroom as well. And then I welcome you to contact me. We can have phone conferences, video conferences, in-person conferences, whatever works best for you. I'm available to assist when we get to that point in the course selection. Thank you, Mrs. Gieta. Hi, um, as the guidance technician for STEM, I assist high school students with questions on a variety of topics, including the A through G requirements that you see in CSU schools um, request, uh, creating their California College Guidance Initiative accounts. This is a fairly new program. It's called CCGI. You'll be hearing more and more about that um, during their four years. Also, financial aid information, including when they're a senior and they have to fill out the FAFSA. Uh, many times there are questions about that, so I assist with that. I also work with the guidance team on arranging for college representatives to come and talk to our high school students. That usually happens during their lunchtime. We let them know in plenty of advance notice. Uh, have, we've already had several this year, and we plan on having several more. Uh, as well as field trips to college campuses, that's going to be happening in, again in the spring. And then in the upcoming year, I'll be working with Mr. Mayhew in reaching out to our community, um, asking uh, professionals in a variety of fields to mentor our seniors who are working on capstone projects. Great, thank you, Ms. Unrath. All right, and Mrs. Whitehead, as uh, Dr. Singh alluded to earlier, is not able to join us this evening, so I will go ahead and cover her slide here. But Basically, what you see on the slide before you is the application process and the timing. Um, we uh, The application window closes um, on January 27th, and that is for all students. Uh, if Even if your child is a current RSA eighth grader, they are still required to apply if they intend on continuing on with STEM high school. Obviously, any student who is new to STEM 
um, from RUSD would also have to fill out an application and their application process is slightly different, but the application link is there as well. This entire slideshow will be posted on our website as well as this video. Um, so the links are there. They're also on the high school website as well. Um, the link directly click on apply and you will find yourself right where you need to be. Um, okay. And then the notification process is down below current eighth graders that go to STEM will be notified by the end of February and then new to STEM applicants will be notified in mid March. And then those are the dates that we use. Miss Ayala is our registrar. Sorry. Mrs. Whitehead is our registrar. That is her email address there on the screen if should you have questions regarding registration. Okay, that brings us to STEM high school activity. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Singh who is going to fill in for Mrs. Murray who would have been here this evening. She is our ASB coordinator for high school. So Dr. Singh. Thank you, Mr. Sandifer. So there are lots of opportunities for our high school students to get involved. We have a robust ASB. Uh, there is an application process for that, and Mrs. Murray is our ASB advisor. Science Olympiad, we are champs. If you've ever been in our NPR, you will see that the entire NPR is covered with accolades that we've earned from Science Olympiad, as well as speech and debate, which uh, Ms. West leads up. We have a theater, active theater club, um, various clubs such as CSF, uh, Make-A-Wish, Red Cross, Basically, any club that your um, child does not see, they can pretty much start. They just need to find a teacher advisor and a place to hold their meetings. So there's lots of opportunities for leadership. So we encourage students to start new clubs and really get involved. We have a, a very um, active yearbook staff. They're always out taking pictures and interviewing people. Um, newspaper, I believe Miss West is also leading up the newspaper this year. Various dances such as midwinter, homecoming, and prom. If your student is still um, deciding whether to attend STEM or not due to active um, interest in sports, you're child can attend their or play sports at their home school and still attend STEM high school. We have a growing number of student athletes and um, it's really the best of both worlds. So although we cannot offer sports on site, um, your son or daughter can still participate in sports at their home school and attend STEM high school. Great, thank you. Okay, so we're getting close to wrapping up our presentation piece here, and then we'll take questions at the end. Um, and one of the questions that does come up is, you know, oftentimes, you know, I've been doing this now for several years, for along with this, many members of this team. Um, and what does make, what does like STEM, or what does STEM offer our, our graduates that other schools may not, or what allows STEM high school graduates to stand out? Uh, and there's a number of things, and I put four bullet points on this board, but there are many other things that we could talk about. But these are the things that are easiest to point to. Um, we do offer an engineering CTE pathway with college credit. Um, that's not unique just to STEM. Many schools offer that as well. But in addition to that, we also, every one of our juniors has the opportunity to earn the state seal of civic engagement, which is part of their diploma. They also all have an opportunity to um, participate in a capstone research project, which is a, a, a gold mine of opportunity for our students because it allows them not only to go through the research process that Mr. May was talking about, but it gives them a story to talk about. And talking about their story is what those college applications are all about. Uh, it's not just the courses or the clubs. It's what did they do in their community or what interests them? What did they learn about? What did they do? And that Capstone Research Project gives them that opportunity, especially if you pair that up with a mentorship opportunity. And that is something that we are continuing to grow here at STEM. And then following the Scholar's Diploma, which is kind of that cap piece that uh, also allows them to stand out. We are the only high school in the district that offers that currently. So students that graduate with the Scholar's Diploma um, have that extra advantage, if you will, of uh, something that makes them stand out amongst um, their peers that may be from other schools or other districts, um, other states. So those are just a few things. 
But one other thing that really stands out for a STEM student is that it, the sense of family here at the STEM Academy High School. It is a small high school experience, uh, which can be very enriching. Uh, it's not something that's easily duplicatable at a large high school. And so having that opportunity, uh, along with the other things that are, that are listed on the slide, um, really allows for the student experience to be something to be celebrated um, and uh, something very valuable. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to our last piece here. And so where are our graduates now? Well, they're everywhere. Um, every UC is represented. Um, we have students overseas. We have students back east. We have students in the Midwest. We have students that choose to go to the military. We have students that choose to go to RCC. Um, there are, uh, there are, there's no one path that STEM Academy will lead these kids, these students to. But um, as you can see from just looking at just a small sample of colleges here where our former students have uh, attended, this isn't just acceptances, but this is students attending these schools. Um, you can see it's pretty enriched. So we thank you all for attending this evening. Um, and we look forward to obviously an engaging, empowering, expanding year for the students that choose to come. Uh, my contact information is here. Dr. Singh's contact information is here as well. In this slideshow, you also have contacts for our registrar and our counselor and our guidance technician, as well as Mr. May, who are our program coordinator. So we are happy to answer those questions. Um, please feel free to reach out to us via email. Uh, you can always reach out to the school by calling as well. So that concludes our formal presentation. Uh, transportation to and from school, just as your student would be uh, having an eighth grade here at STEM right now, is continued on into high school for um, next year. It'll be for ninth and 10th graders. So ninth and 10th graders are permitted to ride the bus. Um, with regards to sports, if that was part of the question or not, I'm not sure, but if your student chose to participate in sports, RUSD does not provide transportation for sports. So um, accessing the home high school would be on the student's family to make that transportation. The transportation process, it's very straightforward. Um, basically, they'll, they'll, you'll, you'll uh, let them know that you are planning on using the bus um, and they will put you on the list. 